Hi everyone, it's Peter Zellum's Greeny Flicks Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Um, I'm talking about the Leica M10 monochrome and fast lenses. Recently I did a video on the Leica 21mm, this is M series, 21mm f2.8 versus the 21mm f1.4. So the 1.4 is two stops of faster than the 2.8 and i did a bit of a review so the link will be there somewhere in the uh, description uh, below or up there in the video but i wanted to also i suppose use the 1.4 21 millimeter a bit more out in real life situation as how does those two stops of extra light become an advantage uh, in real life photography <laughs> I took it out at night around Sydney Harbour and I'll show you some photographs, go into Lightroom, we'll have a good bit closer as well. Just see and just see what's the advantage of having two stops extra light coming in, both uh, in obviously the shutter speed that you use, so you can hand hold as opposed to using a tripod, and also what that means with regards to your ISO, so you're using lower ISOs instead of the really high ISOs where images start to change and break up, whatever. And um, let's just see what impact that is at night with city lights and harbour. The Leica monochrome I bought secondhand, it's only a, a year old, um, but what I did notice with the with a couple of lenses I was trying out on the monochrome was that the focus was out with the rangefinder compared to what the lens was actually showing as far as the distance is concerned. And that was confirmed also when you're using live view on the back of the screen. And um, so I had to adjust the horizontal alignment where the two little windows in the rangefinder. I do have a video on that and uh, that's also in the link below, above or below. Um, so if you're finding that with your Leica camera that the rangefinder is out of whack with the horizontal alignment compared to the focus, then there's an easy fix and I showed that in the video. So I was actually surprised that uh, for a camera that's less than a year old, uh, that alignment was off. So whether it was off from new or what, who knows? But once I corrected it, all my lenses are aligning properly and I've got nailing the focus at all levels as well. The 21 millimeter can either use uh, electronic viewfinder, which I don't have for the M10 at this stage, um, or the back of the screen to get all your framing correct, um, or you estimate what the framing might be. So whatever you see through the rangefinder, add a little bit all the way around and that's your 21 millimeter. So that's how I was setting up my frame in my shots. Let's have a look at some of those shots. I'm around the Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, shooting from the north side, Milsons Point. So the combination of lighting that we have here, uh, I've got the 21 millimeter f1.4 lens on and uh, shooting at 1 25th of a second. And the ISO level is at 2500. So there's a lot of detail. I'm shooting at infinity. Being a rangefinder, you can just estimate focus the distance that you want, and then everything should be focused within the depth of field that you've chosen according to the f-stop. This is at 100% zooming in. So at least that gives us an idea of the type of detail that we have in the photograph, which is heaps. Now I have adjusted aspects of this photograph. If we go into develop, you can actually see that I've actually turned the highlights down. I've uh, brought up the shadows, some more detail in the shadows. And uh, the whites have been left the same. I've increased the contrast slightly. I've increased the exposure slightly as well. If we look at the before and after shots, uh, that's before, that's after the adjustments. If we look at the cloud here, you can see that by bringing up the shadows I've brought up, some of the detail in the cloud as well. There's a little bit of grain in there that you can see as well. Isn't so much there before I change some of the exposure settings. 
by the 2500 ISO, it seems to be more than acceptable. There are burnt out areas, so it doesn't matter how much you take down the highlights, you're still not going to recover those details there. Let's have a look at the next shot. And again, the before and after. And you can see I've brought up the shadows quite a bit here just to bring up the detail. Again, shooting at infinity, there's still a large depth of field when you're shooting wide angle. So even though I'm shooting at uh, 1.4 at infinity, I've still got quite a bit of detail here. Uh, um, yes, you can see that's sort of slightly out of focus there. And uh, then the detail starts to come in somewhere around here. But for nighttime shots, how does that impact the photograph? I think not much. So again, shooting at 1.4 is great. So one of the, that was one of the aspects of comparing that other video uh, where I was comparing the 2.8, 21mm to the 1.4. And is it justified to pay the extra price to get a lens that's uh, two times faster? I like shooting with fast lenses. So to me, it's justified. If I was shooting at 2.8 instead of 1.4, I'd be pushing the ISO from 2000 to 4000 to 8000. That would be one option to keep the same shutter speed. Or I'd have to go down to 1 15th, 1 8th of a second. I could to hand hold 1 8th of a second. Yes, it's possible. Uh, if I rest again something and um, or if you use a tripod. So I guess that's the, the difference there. Um, again, let's have a look at the before and after. So you can see I've really brought up the shadows here. You can see we've got quite a bit more detail. And here in the crane in the infinity area. Um, loads of detail. So again, happy with the lens. Lots of detail to recover in the photograph. Seems to, being wide open, seems to handle the bright lights. A little bit of haze around the light here but uh, I think in the scheme of things that's fine quite a bit of detail on the edges I think at 2.8 you'd actually recover more contrast here on the edge than you do at 1.4 but anyway that's um, one of the trade-offs when you're shooting wide open that the detail does start to drop off a little bit towards the edges let's look at the next shot and again the before and after so I've pulled up some of the shadows here on the sides. See, I've pulled up quite a bit actually. Yeah, I'm mainly focused on the shadows and just increase the exposure. It's showing 1.7 now, whether I bump the aperture or whether Lightroom is just doing a calculation of what it thinks the aperture is. It's shooting at 1.4, but I might bump the aperture to 1.7. But again, good detail, so that's great. Here I was panning uh, the shot. So we we're at 1 30th of a second and I was following this ferrier as it was taking off. So the background is blurred, as you would expect, with some, uh, and then they were panning the shot means that the, the boat in most of the area is in focus. Uh, when you go start to go to the extremities, it's, you start to have a different level of movement at the ends compared to the center, as you would expect when you're panning. And before and after again, so I've actually pulled up the, the exposure quite a bit here. I've gone up uh, two and a half stops in the exposure and push the highlights right down and pull the shadows up as well, increase the whites, reduce the blacks. So you can see the difference between the two shots before and after. Doing a park, looking at before and after, you can see I've really pulled up the um, gone up by two and a half steps to bring up the exposure, reduce the highlights and also increase the shadows. That's come up quite nice. Quite a bit of detail there. We're in the bottom corner here and there's uh, plenty of detail there as well. Okay. Uh, in this shot here, I did actually focus on this area here intentionally. Um, just to have this area now out of focus. So again, shooting at 1.4, it gives us an indication of what level of detail we have with um, at 1.4 and the depth of field. And it starts to drop off. If this sort of lines up with this area here, it starts to drop, this is a depth of field here, before it starts to drop off and then things start to get out of focus. 
and uh, see how much difference in the exposure before and after again there's the, my adjustment shadows push right up exposure up by one and a half stops all right what have i done here ah, okay i'm shooting at 2.8 so as opposed to 1.4 got lots of light so at iso 400 uh, increase the exposure slightly the contrast push the shadows up move the, sh uh, the highlights down before and after well before any adjustments, you can see a big contrast between the light areas and the dark areas, and I've just rebalanced that out a bit. So the conclusion out of all this, I think I I like the 1.4 21mm lens. I like having that option of having those two extra stops and having more light. Uh, so we don't have to either use a tripod or we can use lower ISOs, particularly in the evening around the different lighting conditions. Um, obviously, budget is important, and therefore, if your budget doesn't allow a 1.4 lens versus a 2.8, well, that's going to determine whether which lens you go for. But I'm happy with that 1.421 mil lens. You might have noticed, uh, holding and while I'm holding this camera, that I do have a little case around the monochrome here. This case is actually a handmade leather case by luigicases.com uh, by Luigi Cruscenzi so an Italian leather manufacturer um, I discovered his clay cases accidentally and um, the things that I like about it is it's really soft leather which is really nice but then you've got this little panel here at the back that you can actually pull down and then you can review your shots if you so wish but if you want to do old school and just take photographs as if you're filming, taking film shots, well, then you don't even bother doing a review of the shots you did, you've done. Take the shots and then review it later on when you get into Lightroom to see what sort of results you got. Um, by doing it that way, you do um, become more knowledgeable about reading light, estimating the aperture, the f-stop, the shutter speed, the ISO, whatever's appropriate for the type of scene that you're actually doing so that improves your skills in photography. I will be doing a review on this case and uh, that in another video in the future, but uh, so do tune in, um, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to my videos, if it's the first time to my channel, please do subscribe and obviously do like, I really appreciate your support. Press notifications and then when the new videos will come out, uh, you will be notified. There'll be more videos coming out obviously on photography, but there's I've done some recent trips in Central Australia and there'll be more of that stuff coming out as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks, cheers, bye.